just going to sit there and be quiet, right? We're going to argue against ourselves. I open, I open the broadcast now all the time like this. That's all I see out there. I see nothing but a bunch of uh, people want to argue. Uh, I, I see a bunch of people want to take on information that's not valid. And then they want to go run with it or they want to run from it. I, I don't know. But uh, I guess if I hadn't had the experiences I have about how to get how getting stuff done, what it takes, and, and to do so, I guess I wouldn't have such an, an attitude. I would hope that most of y'all would take get that attitude. Don't make any excuses and don't dismiss a bunch of stuff. And don't think that we know so much, so much we don't know. Uh, that, uh, that that's part of the battle is over uh, outdoing, throwing down what you thought you did know and rebuilding your knowledge base and then taking your knowledge and going to do something with it. Seems to be uh, ongoing. Uh, the problem of people responding the wrong way and a lot of that's just a Blank and ignorance. Just what has happened to a society that wasn't vigilant on their uh, on their intention to be free from oppression. And it comes in so many forms. And it comes upon you in so many ways. So behind which uh, we tried, I tried to tell you what the principles are about that that we just wasn't told. Uh, what the things I've learned over decades. Uh, maybe uh, some of you don't understand what I'm talking about. I've heard that people don't understand what I'm saying. A lot of that to me is that you're not reading the right stuff. You're not looking at the right things. You're not taking what I'm saying and applying them or asking me questions about what I said to apply so that we can get us a lot farther down the road on getting functional in a society that was yours, if you wish to choose it, to step up and protect your being free in it, within it. You could be free to move about the country. That is BTW RLM 271 BTW RLM 271 for those in the past cast, or the, actually be the blogcaster now that we don't have too much of the, uh, the the past cast and recast over there on UCY. And um, another, as I understand it now, and, and those of you that are not listening and don't know where to find us, you can find uh, Behind the Woodshed at, I believe it's HTTP forward slash forward slash I think there's a colon in there RLM radio dot XYZ RLM radio dot XYZ I think is the simple quick way to get there if you if you have a, don't have a place to listen and you do hear this later just make sure you go over there there's a player running it'll run all our broadcasts either live uh, when there's someone doing a live broadcast or we'll, inter, we'll interject uh, uh, the, the file so those of you coming from UCY thank you very much and anywhere else I also hear that uh, another broadcaster is going to stop Broadcasting, and I'll just the end of an era was a was a statement made by Darren Weeks of Govern America. I just found that uh, that came across that that he's not going to be broadcasting anymore. You can read why on this. Um, you'll have a link later. You can go find it out yourself. The end of an era is the title of his page, and he's explaining why he's been doing this since like around late early two thousands, and it's just uh, things have uh, just built built up to the point where he's time to stop. I'm only mentioning that to you because the voices that would be speaking to you are going to, they run out of their time. There's just, we're, it's an attrition thing that we're up against and no one, no one comes along to to fill the gap. Some do, but not enough. And then you come with whatever thoughts you have, uh, which may or may not be valid. Um, not intentions, but just the fact of it, as I see the way it is coming down on us. And I think I don't even know what to say about my own statements other than I, I don't know what else to say to y'all. The, I don't know what else to say at some point. And I think I've told you everything was happening is happening at that point. I don't know what to do now. But we didn't get the, the army of people we needed to stand up and defend ourselves. It seems. Y'all could be there, but I don't, I don't see that much of a, of a, of a force to, uh, to cause a resistance. I talk about, I see the words being used, but I don't, I don't see the actuality of it. So, Darren Weeks is not going to be doing his uh, Governing America. I think I did a broadcast interview with him through Melody Hallett. That's another broadcaster that's not doing it. I haven't actually talked with her at all for a long time. Don't know what happened to her. Uh, but see, there's people that uh, with a, an intention to instruct you and bring people together to give information uh, that are they go away eventually. That'll happen to me, whatever reason. Tech diffs or nature willing, folks. That's just why I end the broadcast. I don't know if I'll be here next week. I've been fortunate and blessed that I can. Well, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I, my, my, what I feel is blessed is just an, just a hollow uh, view too. Because if you're not listening or argue with me or don't take what I say and go to do it, apply it to your thing, uh, that you find a wrong you need to make right and find a wrong you need to make right. In these dire times, these interesting times, we're told, it's over. It's done. Your life will be 
No, you may not make it out, but uh, you may make it out. But you're, the, everybody you're leaving here behind uh, that you've uh, fathered um, or mothered uh, is going to be subject to this oppression. And it's not. It's my what I see is not a pretty picture. They're just and there's an incapacity that's built into trained into people. Another network that'll be going down just a one last week. I think it'll be here. Not even a week left. I think freedomsnetwork.com. That's a censorship-free network that uh, no one's interested in, apparently. That's going down uh, June 23rd or so without donations. And so you can find, uh, get over to freedomsnetwork.com. I don't know how the how it works out. You can do PayPal, I think. Donate if you want to preserve another place for censorship-free interaction. You talk about it. Are you willing to cough up the dough in order to make it work? I don't know. That's up to you all. It's not looking good. And again, those that have continued that along for these last few months, thank you very much for those of you that are interested in doing that. Uh, I find it interesting that, the, again, a certain mindset does not get supported in this world, and that's consistent. And I'd look at that and say, well, that's the enemy doing that. And uh, there's a lot of enemies against you that would, and it's yourself. And so, I don't know what to say. I'm not a, I'm not, I don't know what else to say to do to promote this stuff and to get you all fired up. You, I do that, and people tend to get upset. So I don't know what to say about that part. So it's up to us. Uh, freedomsnetwork.com will be dying, biting the dust on June 23rd, unless some donations come in, to, and strictly for the server costs that I understand. Uh, there's no... That's, uh, the help to make that website is, is, is given... Uh, volunteered folks. I don't know what else to do to what kind of tools we can put together uh, whether I come and give you what I know, whether Grimner puts his talent on the backside of a uh, I didn't mean it that way, but a backside of a website whether Boditi stands up to try and get that to work well as well uh, uh, someone like Jules uh, over at UCY then runs out, of, uh, runs out of an ability to keep up because of certain reasons uh, attrition folks it's up to you to help sustain that so I guess enough on the promotion because I don't do it good anyway uh, but uh, I guess I could tell you this, uh, paypal.me, www.paypal.me, slash Freedoms Network, I think gets you right to the PayPal if you want to do that. Otherwise, you contact Grimner or D- Bo Diddy or whoever is uh, on that to keep that keep that going. Otherwise, as Grimner says, he, he's free with it. He doesn't have, to, doesn't have to keep it going if no one's interested. I just find that, that there's not enough interest. And, and so we talk about all this stuff all the time, and yet nothing really comes out. And that's my main uh, my main problem with a lot of this, and it's it's part of us. I don't even have a judgment to make. It's just part of us. I mean, it's part of the world. Uh, you know, we said be in the world, but not of the world. Well, here's a group of the world to tell you exactly what I just said. You do a lot of talking, but no action comes to back it up. UN resolution slams Israeli murder of Palestinians in Gaza. I looked at it as just, uh, that's just a WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment Federation promotion. Uh, the UN resolution slams Israelis. See, nothing got done. Nothing's going to get done. But it's right, it's, on the, it's in our consciousness to, do, to say and talk and do nothing. And so, I don't know what to say to, to you. When you see uh, wrong going on and then people will, uh, it's not enough to have a say. I guess is my point right here. You're seeing it. They talk about slamming Israel as title slamming Israeli. You know, we talked about Israeli versus Israelite versus a Jew. A Jew is really just someone who speaks Hebrew. You don't speak Hebrew, you're not a Jew. How's that? That's the dictionary definition. You know, t- Take out your context, you're gonna, that's all you're going to be left with. And so we can make lots of claims, we can make lots of discussion, but it means nothing. Literally means zero. And so, same thing here. UN resolution slams Israeli murder. Who cares? You talk about it. Who cares? Are they gonna? Is someone gonna step up to stop that? That's when you're gonna. That's when you see the tail of the tape. What's their deed? Indeed, folks. World Wrestling Entertainment, big time wrestling is all that reminded me of. So what? What is being done about the U.S. proxy Zionista murderers of the concentration camp inmates? Is what I want to know. I, I don't mean talking about it. I don't mean just griping about it like I'm doing right now. What are the those in the in the positions of the dis, rights and the seats of decision that can make us say and order up those that would stop it? Where are they? And if they're not there, what are they actually promoting that you are agreeing with in your silence? And I told you last week. Sometimes these like these administrative uh, provisions and hearings and comments. Sometimes you can hit the problem directly, 
And as we saw now in the 5G, maybe not so much directly. So you have to take a couple steps back. Sometimes you, this is such a big problem, you would have to take steps way back and look at where you could jump in and start remending the problem and create the recreate the foundation that would cause this kind of a change. But if you can't do the local, you're not going to do this one is the point. People don't understand me it's because you're not engaging. Those that engage start to understand. Them. They understand that whether or not they're going to keep up or, until, or not either. That's an interesting problem as well. You start to realize when you actually have to do something, you can't talk no more. There's nothing to say. It all tells you right up front what's going on. Your incapacity is, your inca- is, a, is a truth, self-evident truth. And you either fix it or you succumb. It's really not that hard to figure out. Uh, while all this uh, this um, slamming of the Israeli murders of the concentration camp inmates in the Palestinians and Gaza is going on, right days before that and silent before the UN on that slamming was the U.S.-backed coalition bombs Yemen's new cholera treatment center after unleashing world's largest outbreak. Did you get it, folks? No one talked about this that I can see. The UN didn't step up and slam this. Why? Why would you do that? Why would Americans do that and allow that to be done? You go after a cholera treatment center. You know, as I was thinking about the cholera, you know, all this uh, U.S. back proxy is, is, is up uh, terrorism going on in Syria. You hear about all the stockpiled chlorine. You know that that means that they're not only stockpiling chlorine to make false, if you will, false flag or false attacks or the ability to attack and blame it on someone else, all that chlorine is being kept from the Yemenis to pur- purify their water. All that stockpile of chlorine is being kept from places in the world that need it to purify their water. Oh, we look at the, oh, there's chlorine stuck in a hole somewhere that an is-is can use. We forget those chemicals, if they weren't, if there's, if there's vast amounts of it being stockpiled away from its use for better elsewhere. And so we have like a double murder going on. And the United States is the part and parcel to it. So, so keep your silence up, all your crickets. Again, I don't know how to get at that directly, but I think a bunch of us starting to work at, work at parts of it, we can, we can get at it direct, uh, indirectly and then pretty readily once we start to understand what the p- problem is. I'm going to read that one more time, and I want you to think about that. United, this thing, U.S.-backed coalition bombs Yemen's new cholera treatment plant. I, I don't even know what to say. I'm just, I'm, I, I think about it and I get shocked. I'm also reading from headlines. I'm not going to go through the story. You can go find that. In fact, I think Darren Week says he's not someone that he goes in depth in a story. That might be. I told you, I don't go to the story. I go to the, the, the headline. I don't even really talk about the headline. I'm trying to show you that there's subject matters out there that there is something to do about. I really could care about less about the story, although the story will get you the lead on how you're going to go if you chose that wrong and the pathway you're going to begin to take. That's the only reason the story is even relevant, maybe the setup so you understand. I don't even really read these headlines, even to discuss the headline more than it's a subject matter topic to get me to show you how we're not helpless and our, it's a self-inflicted wound when we're not acting and responding. Whether or not we're able to talk at any one of these things or even interested in those things or feel capacity to do anything about it, it's still an insight. And I can, I, I can hear the arguments, I can see the opinions, I can see the arguments against me. It means nothing compared to fixing the problems, or at least beginning even. And so I just, uh, I start to think about that. I just want to shut this microphone off. I mean, really, it's just a... It's like Darren Weeks. What is my? He said the same thing. Is there anybody or the other? If I was, I, I, I'm going off of this thing. He said the same reason. If you go read his his article, he says the same reason. He doesn't. Know, he wants to know whether he's trying to find a better place for his talent and to make make it more effective. For as powerful as this this platform is, the voice, the doing a live broadcast, even doing a podcast, it's not apparently as effective as other things to be done, and hosts realize that. Notwithstanding the demands on their lives, I mean, you read Darren's thing. I don't have some of the things he has to deal with. I do. I have managed my thing a little different, but it's all the, really the same. You read that article that he wrote about why he's got to stop after doing it for what a decade and a half or more. Well, just coming up, yeah, a little bit more. 
So it's not, not, there's a lot going on in trying to present this information that may be ineffectual. Why I'm so focused on getting you, you all, all you all to do something. Well, make excuses, just find something. I, I look around, there's all kinds of little things you can pick up. Nobody has this, this thing in them, I guess. Now, I'm not even, I have no judgment about all this. This is a fact, whether or not you agree with it or not. It's a fact. Look around. Argue with me, and then you just prove my point. Self-evident proof, right there. Argue with me. Russia dumps half its U.S. Treasury bonds. Uh, this is, uh, I think, part and parcel to a uh, condition in the world. And, uh, you see the stockpiling of, of chlorine away from the help that the chlorine could be to solve cholera, which is the poisoned water, the bacteria in the water. And we're going to do some of these uh, health type of, of interactions that are going on here in this broadcast as they popped up this week as well. But one of the health, the major health of a nation is its uh, money supply or its fiat supply, however you want to do it, whatever everyone agrees to at the time. That's really all we're talking about. I, I really could care less about getting into the accuracy, the constitutionality, the lawfulness. It's what you use. Now what? You're doing it to yourself. Now what? So the lifeblood of a nation is its uh, money. Uh, or however, like the United States has figured out how to confound people and not use any money, but debt now, and actually function some more, and everybody agreed with it. That's consent. Well, everyone wants to deny it, and they continue it. Anyway, Russia doesn't get a consent no more, uh, and I think this is an in, a big deal, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't get out much, so I don't see him, who's talking about it. Russia dumps half of its U.S. Treasury bonds, uh, $47 billion worth. You want to talk about poisoning the United States system, that's how you're going to be doing it. And here's why. Because the people never stopped it. Uh, the people never maintained their own separateness. As I keep trying to tell you about what's happening with these uh, new currencies and this and that and the fiat everyone will complain about. And you focus on the Fed and don't even know that's not the answer. Oh, we need an audit. Uh, it, it's already been done every year. CAFR, CAFR. If you didn't listen to Clint Richardson and he proved that to you, I don't know what to say to most people. Again, he's a guy that had to back out of doing his broadcast because he doesn't think that uh, y'all are, are paying attention. He thinks he can find out some other, get another uh, more effective way to get at y'all. And so, it's just on and on and on. But Russia knows what's up. Get rid of their debt. Now, there are going to be some problems with Russia here on this. When you try to remove yourself, you become the target for the, for the bully. The force and effect, the power in the world. Don't underestimate power probably the only thing you need to really focus on and really er orient to orient yourself. You can deny that the power is not just. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter. It doesn't exist, and it won't hurt you. And that's what I keep telling you all. Quit dismissing the thing that you... You may not like it. I may not like it. I'm not agreeing to any of it. I'm saying it is there, and it functions. And if you don't take... If you don't bring that into your calculus, and you do your study and, and analyze that, you're going to fail. It's pretty simple. But Russia once knows what's going on. Watch what Russia is doing. I may not agree with Russia. I may not agree with what they do. I may not even fully understand Russia. But they are acting in a certain way on an international level. And I just showed you in the UN, you can slam something and do be crickets on an international level. Is you locally? This this is a fractal. There's no distinction between local to, to international. So you watch Russia, what they're doing, and you're going to see what you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have debt. They're trying to get rid of their debt as best they can. They've been buying up gold like China. There's a movement afoot on the, on the monetary side of this thing in the world, and it's really not money more than support of value intrinsically. You need to be taking cognizance of this. I'm not going to even, like I said, not talk more. So what, ha what is it happening now or this week in the United States that starts to look like that's what's going on? And I say look like because you got to be cautious. I don't trust anyone anymore. All right? You shouldn't either. I'm not saying you can't trust anybody. But listen, there's lots of trusts that are being breached right now. So why would I want to buy into any of it? But a Texas bullion depository officially opened for business this week. And so we have the evidence that, and this was the story we reported here to let you know that there's a state, the people in a state said that they wanted a gold depository. They've got their, they repatriated some gold, their deposit, they had to build a big depository building in order to secure it, and now they're open for business. But be careful on that, exactly what it says. It's in commerce, it's not in wealth. So I caution you, I would, I think the only option here is to watch how 
it's being used as the depository, but you don't put your gold in it. You use it for the justification to now use gold and silver as money because they take gold, silver, platinum, and some other things as a depository. A depository is different than what you most people are recognize or um, understand. What you don't, what you have to look very carefully is that they're going to tie this into uh, electronic funds. There's the problem. It becomes more of like that certificate banking. Well, they won't get you. They're going to entice, induce all your gold bugs and all your silver bugs into using that depository to get to what? A cashless society. And then they have your, they have your hard stuff, your hard to, um, uh, metals. So I, I caution you on this one, but here's the right direction you should be taking. Make it legitimate in the states to make gold and silver coin useful as money again. Just don't engage in the regulatory side or the business side. Keep it outside and private. You do that amongst yourself. Once the state recognizes that medium, go ahead and utilize it separate. Don't put anything in that depository. That's, that's for whatever it's worth to you all. But the point about this was that Texas becomes the lead on how you go ahead and get back to your, your uh, specie. Your uh, what they call sound money. I don't even know if I like that, but it doesn't matter. That's what people go off on. Texas bullion depository. Very interesting. Very cool. If this was a uh, hundred years ago, I'd probably say do it. Uh, but right now we're in a time of of um, deception and fraud and transition, transformation, modernization. Do not ever take your eye off the ball of those uh, indicators. Okay, so. Uh, interesting thing going on. They talk about a. They're, they're trying to induce you to engage with them. Uh, the power shift away from the federal government sets the foundation to undermine the Federal Reserve's monopoly on money. No, it's not money. This is what the the lie is right up front. And so, uh, you all who've been studying and probably can uh, tell yourself more than I will tell you on this broadcast in the short time I have. Uh, it's not about the Fed. It's about going back to some money. You do that locally, all right? The, I don't sound money, this uh, specie, the gold and silver coin. Go find it. The junk coin, go get it. Go start using it. Then now, at least in Texas, you have a guide on how this will work. But I would suggest, because if you, well, study the depository very carefully and what its future is going to do to make it easy for you. While they keep your hard stuff, they're going to give you electronic stuff. Remember, how do you get the electronic but to be registered somewhere, somehow trackable, traceable, to track downable? All right? And you see the social credit. On, they're telling us in China, that's what this is going to be. And all of a sudden, your gold is gone. And so, use it to start utilizing gold and silver currency on the street. That's what every state needs to start doing. You need to privatize your dealings in a, in a thing that's other than federal, other than even na international. So Russia tells you don't deal in debt. We're going to get rid of ours more while we're, they're being attacked. This is the most stupid thing I've ever understood. You're dealing with someone who has your debt, and then you're going to go attack them. I guess that's uh, one way to survive, given that you are in an inverted situation. You take them out, then they... Uh, are owing you by now the stuff you did, the spoils of war you just did because they were trying to back out of trying to owe you more debt, hold your debt for you. And when that's all sent back to that to this country, that makes your life more expensive, folks. I don't know if you understand this. And they talk about in the story, uh, the, the story about Russia that China holds a trillion or so, and they repaid, it sent back a few bit, a bit more as it's collecting more gold. Yeah, uh, so getting onto so Texas, the Wild West, uh, they're showing you how to how to do this, and I uh, I say watch out, but utilize it for the legalization <laughs> that the the states reserve to themselves for coin, and utilizing it as a medium of exchange for goods and services. If I can trans, if I can bridge a couple of spots here, um, again. We're we're doing it to ourselves. We have we have the ability to stop doing it to ourselves. So in Texas, with the Wild West that it is, and you know, have all these gun rights and all these things going on. Uh, we heard last week uh, that essentially it's become the Wild West again. But you have no rights. Where the Supreme Court says it shoot first, think later. I told you, soldiers aren't hired for them for how they think. And so this country is now reduced to officially, as I told you it would be, to shoot first. 
and you live in a state, that state you have to do an analysis, and the only state I know of, one of the only ones I know of, is you live in an occupied territory in the minimum. Uh, so you don't live in the Constitution Republic you all think you live in, and your laws really mean nothing also. And so we have only a very narrow windows of things to do, and I've told you what they are over time. I've explained a lot of these, uh, and it doesn't sound like it's very powerful, but moving the masses is, is one important tool, and embarrassing the system is another to uh, to cause the prairie dogs and the societal prairie dogs to take notice of the evil that's the shadow that's over them embarrassment is a very important point and you also expose a truth the fact that you don't actually have uh, the remedies directly that the so-called law is supposed to sit there to provide to you to protect you in other words, the government was to set up not to be an active imposer. It was sit there to be a neutral um, forum in order for people, the people, to interact amongst themselves in their con in their conflicts. And I think that's been all I hear about people talking about this. Is that's been, been majorly lost in the conversation, as everyone has their utopian ideas on how they're supposed to look and completely divorces uh, what's been gone on and why it's been gone on and what's gone on and what's failed to work. It's like in mining law. Oh, they want to bring back, they'll keep bringing back in Washington. Oh, they're going to bring leasables, of, uh, they're going to lease the land. They tried that right before they made the mining law as a grant. And, and leasing the land failed so utterly that they abandoned it for the mining law. So some of you that might be into that or where this thing is supposed to go in your mind, it didn't work. It's already been tried and failed. Same thing as arbitration. In fact, I was involved in the middle 90s on a court case. Arbitration is a crime. So, if you guys embrace or you can have arbitration, that's a crime. Because why? Because some third party who you don't have a control over is making a decision. And then you forgot that right before that, you didn't have to go and argue about your property. That's the other thing I noticed. People don't understand. If you got a, if you, since you have a property, you have nothing to argue over. You may, you throw it in as something to be decided by somebody. You throw it into an arbitration, which I doesn't seem to me to be anything different than the courts you have. And so what I've said, what have I said? Okay, well you use the system of the common rule, the common law rule of how the court proceeds, and you get rid of that arbitration system. No one seems to hear me on that. You'd rather argue. You'd rather sit, tell me how much you know or don't tell me nothing at all. I don't know. Make up your own story. Make up your myths. But this Wild West has now gotten to the point that the government can shoot first and ask questions later, and they have a shield of immunity, which means, as I told you, the, the academia professor was saying, you have a constitution. You'll now have to prove this constitutional thing, this, con this, this, that, the lack of here. And I said, but he doesn't. He just, he just agreed to the whole thing. But you're dead. You don't have an argument after the, this act of shoot first. Unless you're this couple, the BLM agents open fire on innocent couple, shoot woman because ATV drove near a restricted area. So now the BLM is involved with shooting people when they get near a restricted area. If that ain't Agenda 21 and bio, uh, the Biodiversity Treaty uh, in your face, I don't know what is. But uh, let me give you some insight on this. And again, I'm not reading from the headlines just to talk about it, just to get it out there. Oh, this is what my opinion is. We have to stop this nonsense. And there's a way to go about starting to do that. You read on this story, the BLM agents open fire on innocent couple. There is a one-sidedness to this story. There's also the author writing their stuff. I would like a little bit more information, but let me just get to the nubbins of it. Uh, they say in this paper that the sheriff is investigating the shooting. I don't know if you all know this, but this is how you have to understand and learn the, what's going on. Uh, the hierarchies of authority, they're there, and they're working, and this is where you start finding whether, or, if you can, the Achilles heels. You, the sheriff reviewing the BLM activity is an in-house investigation. How I, so what are you going to expect to come out, but as we always hear, no real finding of wrong, right? Notwithstanding the qualified immunity shield that they have. But there's other things that are going on in this that I can bring to bear, and I've had, I have with you that you bring. Remember, I've told you this color of authority that's used in unwarranted to take away your rights to do something is felony. But the sheriff is an in-house investigation over the BLM. How? Because when you go to U.S. 43 U.S.C. 1732, 
excuse me, 1733, which relates to 32, 1733, 43 U.S.C. 1733, that is where the, you see the BLM has zero of law enforcement authority unless there's a contract with the local sheriff. So the sheriff is on a contract basis with the local BLM to bring them in as a state officer there. That's their Achilles heel. That's where you can attack them as well. And so those of you that are finding public land areas that are being imposed by the Biodiversity Treaty as a crime subject to murder have an inroad with your county commissioners to stop it. They have an inroad with the county sheriff to stop it. And you do it pursuant to the laws I've been telling you about your right to travel over certain spots. And this restricted area probably was not lawful anyway. That's your coordination. 43 U.S.C. 1712, I think it is. Okay, that's in your county. That's where the General Jefferson Mining District stepped in and said, as a government, we have a say here to point this stuff out and to be the witness of whether or not you can do that. And that has been sufficient to stop a whole lot of things. I don't know why the miners don't quite get this or any other, why the ranchers don't understand it or any of that other stuff. I don't know why they haven't figured this out. We have. I think I was hearing Vincent talking about uh, in the in the Malheur or whatever, or maybe over in the Bundy thing, there was a three or whatever number of 55-gallon drums full of tortoise shells with the with the holes pecked out of, holes pecked out of the back of the shell as the ravens were were doing that. Yeah, and the BLM knew that. Well, guess what? They know it in other places. The ravens are probably the, the bird of prey, if you will, the scavenger bird, if I can call it that, going after, or the murder bird. Whatever bird is big enough to do this will kill other life. We found out with the sage grouse. We found out that was what the so-called scientists in the BLM uh, were saying, that the sage grouse was being killed by a rancher or the miner. In fact, it's the raven that goes after the eggs. So our input was able to shut down that whole uh, that whole imposition, wrong, lawless imposition of a bird uh, that was said to be destroyed by man. It's actually destroyed by other animal. And yet the BLM it lies about this. Well, there's a mechanisms in place. If you all would just look at this, for those of you that are in the area, if you look at what I've been telling you, where to go and how to implement it, you will be, have you will put back in your hands the power to stop this kind of nonsense. Now, let me get to the ATV. I don't know of anything that they allowed a, 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 any officer in the state to shoot at someone who was traveling over the land. I don't know of any felony on that issue. Even if they hadn't stopped when they were commanded, there's a question of whether or not that's a lawful stop. But you don't shoot people because of that. Particularly, we understand that this ATV had a flat tire. No, obviously the stories are going to change. That's why we need to know more. But you can stop this at your local level. People are going to be murdered now. Look how fast they come out. They don't care. They just start shooting now. They have all their excuses. And you haven't been keeping up. And for myself, I've been looking, trying to look ahead to keep up for us, those of us that will listen and start to do this stuff. This is a different type of battle that we're in. And I don't know why people are making any kind of comment outside of it, why this doesn't become the more important thing. Your, your agents in the government are murderers now. And here's the evidence, and on something that really ought not have been even close uh, to coming to this. But we have this evidence and experience before, as, uh, as we have minors who have become into connect, contact with uh, these, these agents. It doesn't matter whether it's BLM or Forest Service, or they invoke the invoke the state police. You have to have a better thought in your mind and a better word in your mouth when they come and they, they decide that they want to obstruct you. And uh, we've, we've helped to educate the miners who will listen. Uh, and, and I will tell you, we've already had plenty of ev experience in that education has saved, certainly saved a major confrontation, if not uh, an, an, an excel, um, an, an ex enhanced response of, of killing. It all depends on how you respond to these guys because you come with the authorities that are not your opinion, but they are actually they are subject to. And I would have to say here, you need to have, it really is not a, a, it's not an option. You have to have camera, some kind of a recording device around. It, it, it ha and then it has to be, 
again, the technology can be used to if you're in an area not outside the of a of a uh, transmission center. But, but you really do maybe have to almost have to engage the cloud to be able to store your stuff so that it can't be stolen from you. But here we have a we, we have a wild wild west now started. Uh, BLM uh, uh, agents uh, can come on and just shoot you, and it's your story against your word against theirs, and they win. And so you are going to have to think about that, those of you that are in the western states and west and, and travel around uh, the land. Now, what I found interesting, and I don't know the area, like I said, I'd like to know a little bit more about it, but about this, uh, I, I, do, I don't need to know. I don't want to know another case. What I'm saying is it would be, uh, you, someone would have to understand better the condition of what was going on, but they did say they had a metal detector on, that, on their ATV. That would have qualified them for access. That's what I told them of motorcyclists a long time ago. They wanted to go through and thumb their nose at the authority. And I said, how about if you just go look at the law and put a pan on your, uh, ta- on your derriere and just tell them that you're, uh, you're mining, you're prospecting. Just tell them that. In fact, why don't you just go prospecting and then you don't have to worry about it. You can use your bike to go just about anywhere, just about anywhere. Got to be careful. Still, but why don't you use the, what's there to protect yourself? at least in the first altercation. And see, when you can do that, then you go to your sheriff and say, listen, they don't have a right to even pull their gun. When they pulled their gun, they lost their immunity. Not only did they, as a police, a peace officer, underneath the certification of the state through your contract with it, that they had to get, but they aren't upholding any real law on the public land that way. So they are without authority, but a color of authority, they're interfering. And they attempted murder, notwithstanding their claims. That's a felony, folks. So you have a better way to approach this. And once you get out there and you start laying the foundation with the authorita that thinks it can do this, and you start showing that they could be liable before the shooting happens, they're not apt to do the shooting. Because they do have a thought in their brain, what little bit's working, uh, that they may be held outside of uh, the even the occupier's constraints. Why? Because I told you, these policies are set up to be the guideline. I think it was just another, I'm not going to have it here, but it was another cop who got hit for choking, six seconds choking. And the whole point about this, different from last week, uh, was that the cops themselves were shocked that the guy would choke somebody with his hands. Even had the trainer come in. I didn't train that guy to do that. Well, see, now that's the, that's the state protecting itself, isn't it? The trainer said, I didn't, you're told not to put your hands around their neck. And the cops testified they were shocked. Guess what, folks? That qualifies the Libra Code where it's beyond the pale even for the soldiers that are to, to not think anymore. When they are responding in, in, in rejection, now you've got them. That's the, there you see an exception. I tell you, look for the exceptions. That's one. The policy is another one. You get that up front. But then, you, more importantly, you get the people that are working this policy to actually acknowledge it. It takes a little bit of work, but it's not impossible. Remember, we, we were, were able to work with one sheriff, once we explained this, who did, in fact, start to implement law instead of pretending. And so it's, uh, again, my experience is not one of being a vain action or inconsequential action. It's what, looking at the problem and directly addressing it, but do address it and properly. So these guys are using guns. Uh, so I don't know what this condition is going to be here as this thing works out. It almost looks like it's a plan. Uh, this is not, um, uh, you have the tension of purportedly people trying to take these guns from you, that keeping them in the government, uh, but there's little evidence that certain certain things roll uh, uh, rolling still in the concept of protection, and I still believe this is more in the concept of uh, pressure regulation. They can't have the society stand up in arms and stop, and stand up and and do something. So they want to keep the, the it on a low simmer. But the, while the BLM is shooting people in the in the forest near restricted areas, not even in them, for I mean I came I don't even know where to go with that. It's so so bizarre. But there it is. This is this is your world. The judge blocks quote assault weapons ban from going into effect in an Illinois town. Uh, this also comes up. So they're going to give you the right to have your gun, but they'll shoot you for having it, apparently, uh, for no real reason. The, um, the point of that story for me was the reasons why the judge blocked it. And I just did a tweet 
I, I, I'll put this for reference for me so that I can tell you today. But the, when you read the article, they claim that the, uh, the reason given for this ability was the ownership of assault weapons are exclusive powers and functions of this state, with no exceptions for guns previously owned or any pre provision for defense uh, in the prior bill for banning was another reason why they w said it couldn't be implemented. I found these two things to be a very weak answer to a ban relative to the purpose reserved to the people, not the state, but the people, in preference to the undefined this state. Do you know what this state is? I bet you don't, and I'll bet you don't have the, the proof to be able to go after what that is, and it's not what you think. I've talked to you all about it over years and years of what this is. And this state, you notice it didn't name it, first of all. This state is a particular state. And that's a veneer, and it can be shown. We'll get into that. I'm pointing out here that the uh, that you're hearing a judge determine that the that the term used here is assault weapons, which is really a fiction. I mean, it's just a it's a nonsense term to begin with, but it's exclusive powers and functions of this state. Totally blowing out the rights reserved to the people or the antecedent rights the state is itself is subject to, the government is subject to in the people themselves. This was a very weak presentation by the attorneys as I see them, as I see it, minimizing this power in the Second Amendment. You notice in the case it was never stated that the Second Amendment or by and through the 14th Amendment empowered the people on their own. You don't see that stated. You're watching the, the diminishment, the dilution of this right. And, and so I want to call attention to that. What am I talking about here? Am I talking about that story? No. I'm saying these guys are, these people are, are guys, these people are making encroachments of, they're a foreign force making encroachments upon your life ever so incrementally. And it wasn't that you didn't have the right to maintain uh, the, the, the weapon of any, the arm I like to actually use. They want to go to assault weapon. I want to, how about your arm? Not the one attached to your wrist. No. This right to keep and bear. The one that the woman last week, the knife that she had the right to keep and bear was shot over uh, without any more exception. Without any re relevance of the constitutional oath that was the officer took at all. But where is it actually that the state, the power and function is in this state and not the people themselves is the diminishment in this decision. Again, it's just one decision that could go on, but this is how I want to point out the notice to us is the diminishment in every so small. Everyone most likely will look at this and said, "Oh, right, the great that we don't. There's not a ban now, you know, the Second Amendment rights." But they, they don't talk about any of that. So you're you're looking over. You're giving too much to the to the so-called win. It should have never been under attack. And then the reasons underlying the foundation for the reasons are weak, and they never spoke to the foundation itself is something you need to pay attention to. It's why, to me, the story is irrelevant. It's the principle they're attacking you on. It's ever so subtle. All right? It's, you've got to bring a much more substantial thing. The attorneys representing won't do that. Absolutely will not. I wish they would. I wish I could, I wish I could trust that, but I can't. See, there's no trust. Oh, and then I go into the next story. Uh, again, we talked about Texas and moving into the depository, and uh, Russia knows about uh, where the wealth is. It's not in the in the debt it owes to the United States in these notes, uh, treasury notes. And the United, and then Texas comes on, and the wild west of Texas kind of knows what's going on. You know, they're uh, for for God, country, and guns. That's what Texas is about. Uh, what about this? What about this money? A judge came out of here a couple weeks ago finally get to it on the tabs as I bring this thing through and I wanted to point out a little thing here I don't know what makes interest to many people but I always found this kind of funny uh, in a way again a trust I didn't realize it was all about trusting today the trusts that are set up uh, that are breached left and right that no one talks about but a judge says regarding money in God we trust as a phrase on money isn't a religion endorsement for all, the, all of y'all that believe that it was 
the, that the phrase, in God we trust, is, is not a religious endorsement. No, it's not. When you look at that, what that bill does, and that whole entirety, you do this research about what bills are, where it issues, the authority it issues, that it's not unlawful. When you realize that it's not unlawful, that, that's going to be a big flipper for a lot of people. It may not be right for you, but it's not unlawful. And then the authority they did it under, not unlawful. And then that broaches a couple of jurisdictional discussions, all constitutional, that I told you it's an offering that you can reject, but most people don't. Certainly corporations will not. But on this paper, it says, in God we trust. They're saying that's not a religious endorsement. That's absolutely right. This is corporate script they're using. And I actually believe, and uh, it looks more like to me, it's telling you something. It's not a phrase of some faith driven belief. It's actually a statement of a trust. It's the in God we trust. You're dealing with a, the in God we trust. It's a trust. And so when you start dealing with these things and these legal fictions that we keep talking about, uh, all these so-called straw men, they're everywhere. And they're done for reasons. It's not just that they're so heinous. It's whether or not they're attaching them to you that's the problem, and whether you can agree or not agree. That's the problem. Everybody uses fictions don't even know it. They're all over the place. There's these fictions that we use to do one thing to the next because sometimes there's just things that reality can't deal with. Our minds are our minds have done that. So we're in creative we're creative little monkeys that way. And our, our creation's kind of fallen. And so there we are. But this is a tool. This is a trust. I think in God we trust. It's a, in God we trust. They're telling you it's a trust. And this is the money is going funneled through that trust. It's a use. The word use is right here with the word trust. Now, I don't, again, I don't get into the dictionary. Let you do all that. Once you see how this is all tied together, you start looking at you read differently. This is in God we use. Well, in God we is a name of it's a it's a name of a trust. And it's not you. It's not the people. It's nothing. It's just someone who made up some. It's some organization that made up a trust, and that's what this thing is funneling through. Makes, because here's the other thing I noticed they do. They tell you it's not a religious endorsement, but they don't tell you what it is. And people have missed this one as well. Don't tell me what something's not. Tell me what it is. I can tell you until I'm blue in the face what something's not. You'll never know what it is. And that's where you start to get you either determine what it is and make the statement a claim, or you get that declared. What it is. Not what it's not. It's not everything else. You can talk to your blue in the face. Well, they say it's not a religious endorsement. What is it then? It's not answered. And no one goes to ask that, which I find fascinating. But you can look and do your research about a lot of this stuff, and it wouldn't... Again, there's not... A lot of this information you have to put together in your mind as you read the facts and how it all ties together, utilizing subject matter I don't hear coming out of a lot of people. Right now we're talking on trusts or uses, and people blow right past these uses big time. I don't understand why they do that, but I've learned that you don't. You can't. The courts will talk to them. Uh, the, the interpretation of this stuff will be talked to, uh, but you have uses, and they're also property. Your granted property is a, for possession and use. That's a, that's a stated express trust. A trust is not to be breached, even if, there's a, even if there's still a split in the title. The trustee cannot beat the beneficiary up with the trust either. He can't steal from it. And you start applying this as I look at these things, and, and you start as I, if you start applying like I look at it, you're thinking, you're not arguing with anybody. You're trying to work hard to figure out, okay, well, if that's a trust and there's an obligation, and where's the trustee, and who is that, and who's the beneficiary, and uh, where's the evidence of this stuff, and you start working all this out. You're not arguing about, uh, well, I, I wasn't going to, you're not arguing about the gold fringe flag. I just put it that way. I guess I'll maybe I'll move into that for just a quick second. I heard something this weekend on the broadcast on the weekend. I only got to be able to hear part of it because I'm in and out doing stuff. And uh, I just want to point out, uh, relative to admiralty, and this could be in that jurisdiction, 
we would have to look a little closer. I, w I would say it is, but without getting, uh, getting too far too fast. Uh, we heard about Admiralty. I heard some statements made about a paragraph being written. I think I found that I found at least one source for where that paragraph was read about Admiralty. And they were talking about a gold fridge flag. If that's your knowledge about Admiralty, Admiralty law, the jurisdiction of Admiralty, you need to back up, you need to go find a law library, and you need to go read Benedict's on Admiralty. And I'm deadly serious about this. If you're taking your information off the Internet and it amounts to the gold fringe flag is Admiralty and that's no good and not constitutional, you need to go read Benedict's on Admiralty. It's in a, every university law school should have the, the multi-volume uh, dictionary, uh, vo encyclopedia, and you need to read it. Uh, uh, well, I found out I, uh, some of them I didn't need to read. I think there was like five or so, maybe less than that, volumes I did not read. So if you read those, I need to know what you found because it didn't seem like the headings were going to be great driving me where I needed to go and I was able to I was sent if you will a message that that was I had read enough three quarters of it was plenty what I did pick out and read as I was reading through it was all I would need to know and so far it has been what I can what I use now but Admiralty has nothing to do with the gold fringe flag it has nothing to do with that and let me explain the experience now what if you walked into a court without that gold fringe Do you know you can? Do you know that the system will actually uh, take the gold fringe off the flag for you? We'll replace a gold fringe flag in those same courts and put it in there just so that you'll be agreeable to the fact of that flag not having a gold fringe and it doesn't change their authority one little bit? See, when you see this stuff and you actually test it, when you get out in the real world and see what they do and listen, watch their documentation on how they describe this, because they talk amongst themselves, these, these judiciary types, these, these uh, plunderers. They talk amongst themselves. and just watch their documents. There's nothing that can't be found that isn't an explanation. But gold fringe flags are the least of your worries. Yes, it could be an indication, but it, does, it isn't the final arbiter of where you're at. Because they've removed them, and it never once changed that jurisdiction. Why? Because the jurisdiction is not established by that flag. It might be as notice. It could be a notice. But when you hear about the concept of a judge wearing many hats... That is jurisdictional hats. That could be admiralty commerce. That could be contract probate. That could be, uh, con uh, uh, well, I just say con merchant. It could be admiralty. It could be maritime, which is different slightly. Under the similar law, it's under the same heading of admiralty. And, oh, I think this was a question that was stated. I think if I get this correctly, Clo asked it. It's in uh, maritime admiralty. Well, it is in the jurisdiction, but maritime is a is a special uh, type of admiralty, and it's more more along the lines of, of uh, just commerce and, and intera lack, interaction and maritime activity, like accidents and insurance and things like that, in a narrow capacity. It's a part of admiralty, but not the totality of admiralty, which extends into international law, as I've told you this over and over again. If you're down to looking at the gold fringe flag, you're missing a big deal. I mean, you're missing everything. Because I, if I've told you also, if you understand what admiralty does and is, and it is, it's a, it's a brutal jurisdiction. Like no, I will not deny that. But when you understand what it's supposed, what it can't, you look for the anomalies, you look for the shortfalls in it, you look for the things it can't do, and you go down and you find those pathways. I've told you all this before. You can defeat an admiralty jurisdiction, even if it's on the land, even if it's doing, uh, doing uh, its thing. You know, searching uh, forfeiture is admiralty, whether you understand it or not. It's all based in, in these uh, contraband uh, over uh, on the land based on a connection to the sea. Insurance is one of those connections. But maritime is a, is a narrow, is this narrow space in admiralty. It's a little different. It's more like you would understand maritime as in a shipping. And the admiralty goes more into the merchant ship uh, versus and war and that and insurance and the rules of war and, and the, those international relations and that kind of thing. Uh, it defines the penal conditions. Maritime might not be penal. So anyway, to, to answer that, if if if, there, if the if the question is uh, the questioner is still listening about this, uh, there's a whole different thing than what I found, and I want I want people to know you can't rely on that. If I if the information I saw was what I was what was being responded to, it's not. Yeah, there's little bits and pieces in there that you might use at some point, but if that's all you're relying on, you're missing a big deal, and you're missing the ability to defeat that. 
And that's where I deal. I deal in the fact of, I told you, there's a thread through every jurisdictional authority that we have created as men trying to figure out things amongst ourselves in our conflicts on all these different places. And there's a thread of authority, whether or not it's called the same in each jurisdiction. The function and remedies and the uh, things that they do and the attachments have a thread of consistency. And you find that thread and you can move between jurisdictions just as fast as the judge may start moving his hat. You don't see it's all invisible happening right before you by what they say and do. And if you're really good, you realize that they did a trick and you solve it for them and that really freaks them out. But that's having to understand and read what these jurisdictions are for and do and their limits and understand. You know, again, I started looking at the, at the um, I, you know, you call them Achilles heels. They're the limitations on a jurisdiction. The, one of the main first ones is that they don't have the person. The person, the thing that's subject to that jurisdiction. And I've told you how to, how to, how to, dis, to, to touch that. I've told you how to defeat that. You also have one like in Admiralty. And this is where I like this one as far as the law relative to the land and relative to the grants. That even if the land is considered part of an admiralty jurisdiction, as a privateer given patent or as patent rights, you're a merchant in admiralty that has immunity unless they can show you're outside of that patent right. And so you defeat that authority right there. The, probably the most brutal jurisdiction, you defeat it. Because you're actually aiding the one who has the prize court. They have to answer into that. And, and so, again, understanding some of this stuff better than just looking for the accoutrements of a jurisdiction are going to get you way, 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 way farther than anything you can imagine. And it's not going to limit, and it's not going to get you into these pigeonholes that are really going to get you nowhere. And really, you'll never get an appreciation. Uh, there's reasons why these jurisdictions exist. There's reasons why admiralty is exclusive to the federal court, the federal jurisdiction, I should say. To me, they sound foreign when you until you realize a, you read read the Benedicts at Admiralty you'll start realizing what I'm talking. They have penal statutes at Admiralty. Why would they do that and attach those to the prisons if there's not Admiralty law running all over the place that they rule you by? And why would you avoid that knowledge if knowing that is how is your key is is your key to the kingdom, if you will? And this is what I keep suggesting to you is how you analyze. You will get to a point when you see this. You will start thinking completely different, and you will look for these things that there are the failures or the shortcomings of a jurisdiction. You'll look for them. And you see them in the court cases. They talk to them as questions. And the court will, be dis will say, well, if you had come this way, then they give you an answer within that authority. Our ignorance, our mass ignorance about all these things is what is being exploited against us. So that's a self-inflicted wound. I've been coming for a decade or so to try and explain this to you all and just try to give, until you have some subject matter, I really don't know what to talk about more than to give you the generalities. But anyway, I don't mean to get so far off on this. The, uh, the gold fringe flag, yeah, you can go through a study. They don't, I don't know if you know this. All that information was compiled out of the uh, middle 90s. And it was put together as a fact and no one went to study much of any of that. And, and I was fortunate. I told you, the very first thing I went and I studied, for some reason, I was found myself standing in front of Benedict on Admiral T. Do you think I wanted to read an encyclopedia? You, you can't believe I did. But, but there I was, and I was taking my instruction, and I said, okay, well, I'm here, and I guess this is what I need to study. When I saw and read the most of that, and then I started seeing what happened to this Admiralty straw man and all this other stuff, I realized that there was a ma it's almost like a massive psyop. I don't know if they, people did it to themselves. They're just looking to run and stop the pain, and it, that was it, and that would do it. But all this nonsense started to come out. And you're watching the, you're watching like the, the, the what, since 95, 96, 97, you're watching the high-graded information now filtering through on the Internet that coming out in 2018. You need to stop uh, embracing. You need to go to the sources of the information and start from there. If you're going to have a chance at all to maybe maybe even understand what I'm talking about. 
And I know it doesn't, like I've said, you don't have to know that. If you get focus on something, you'll be able to still address it. You'll address it just a different way. Uh, people like Clint Richardson, uh, just dealing, just interacting with him in communication, pointing out just a pointer to him was enough to get what you see coming out of Clint Richardson. I, I mean, it's just phenomenal. So I know, I know the capacities in people to do it. And he's not the only one. I've got other people that I have done that. They've come to me with a question. I exposed something to them, and I did, like I didn't see them again. Look what they do. So I know that it's out there to do. I know that the example, if I didn't have that example, I might think I'm a crazy man. But no, there's enough of, a, enough of the people that I've explained this to and point this stuff out to, again, narrowed to what their, their, their interest is, that they've been able to dig the rest up on their own because that's how it works. That I'm at, I've been asking you all this time, just do that. Don't argue with me. Don't take on, don't sit back and say, oh, this is the way the world is a woe and I don't have to deal with it. Folk, it's a woe because we haven't dealt with it. Do I have the ultimate answers? Well, no, I've told you that's a little bit of a problem. But we are in a much better place in dealing with at least the short-term problems as we're working out, as I work out, the, the more ingrained uh, problems in the systemic, the systemic problems. I, I may be one of the few that might be able to, that might be able to work at that. I, I don't know. I haven't heard anybody else talking enough information that I can't qualify as insufficient when you go to the next step or short of the steps. And I'm waiting. I'm always looking for that other, that other, either the mentor I'm looking for or the other one like me or maybe a whole group of y'all. I'm always listening very carefully for those, those types of people. I always uh, find that there's a big shortfall. And I think it's the foundational knowledge. I really think it is. I think well, why ever I, why I was in front of Benedict on Admiralty, I don't know why, but I was there, and I can tell you, even though I don't remember, I couldn't recite it to you. I couldn't tell you where anything was. It, it set inside me, and I've been able to apply it. Now it's lost in the application. And I told, this is, I, think I, I think I did tell Clint Richardson this, this. I said, don't do the mistake I did and think you're going to find the answer and not have to document it. I think I told him, make sure as you go to keep your records and make your documentation. Don't make my mistake, because that's my mistake. My mistake is I didn't collect this stuff up when I was, these knowledge and awareness as I was going and to have a proof that I could display to you today. It's inside me. And it's in, inside me as an application, as doing something. And so it's not so clear, although the action's pretty clear, the basis for why I would do it or why I know what I know. Folks, I'll write stuff down and I go, how do I know that? In fact, I was just doing it the other day. Why did I say that? And I go research to see if I can find something because why would it? Why did that just come out that way? Then I come find out it's sitting right in the core of the principle that I needed to say, and I haven't even studied that for I don't know for years, folks. It's just something that gets in you. It's something that we were all supposed to have in us that was slowly uh, taken away from us. And so I'm kind of way off the off the thing. But here we have a trust. We have uses. We have a judge telling you it's not about religion, even though they use the word God. Uh, we have the fact of what money is and what money isn't. We have uh, the the co the commingling, the adulteration of specie and money into the future non cashless system. They know how to get at you, folks. And and uh, so I caution you. You can still. Here's the point. While they do their depository in Texas. And well, now we know that this money is not an endorsement of a legal of religion. It's a different thing, and they're not telling you what that is. You can now realize these are very important things in play, and you need to make a choice: do you choose the direction they're going, or do you choose the direction you need to go? And each one of you have that choice to make. You have the choice as part of the consent. Now, maybe diabolically, they acquire consent in lots of ways presumptions are the worst because they're the silent ones. They'll tell you that right in the rules. But once you know that, you know that you have to attack them. And then I found is a refinement on how, because at first you say, well, i got to re attack the world of presumptions. How do I do that? But then you find out when you understand the jurisdictions and you understand the requirements as stated in the black and white that they'll tell you they have to follow, it restricts the presumptions you have to address or prove against. And you won't know that until you get involved. It's just, no, I, can, I can't imagine you reading a book and understanding that until you get involved. Because the deception and fraud and the, and the obfuscation is su such a high level anymore. 
but it's not impossible to know. And so, we have uh, evidence today of these trusts, these uses. You, the word use is very, very interesting. It's, uh, boy, just uh, just interesting. Uh, it's And it seems to be something that keeps, uh, it's a, um, a trailing, a dangling chad through everything you might understand. It's certainly something that it seems to pop, pop up in, uh, in um, whatever I've done. Uh, when you get into like the mining law and the miners and the miners government, you have these customs, traditions, and uses. People don't even understand the power of these words. These all predate government. This is all things that a lawful government, and here's the point. When you when they don't do it, you identify them as unlawful or illegal, even so, unlawful when they violate the customs and traditions and uses. Well, uses, those are trusts. And those can be private. And we we we'd rather talk about I mean, gold fringe and think we know what think we know stuff. I mean it's not any of that. I don't want, I want, I hear good people that are lulling themselves into problems, and I'd rather have the good people stand up for themselves a, a lot better. And I don't want people to accept what they say as some real response, because it's not. And that's, and I see harm in, in some of that. And the only thing I can tell you to resolve that, you go to what is known and reflected to be the, re- the source of reliance by the whole world, other than everybody else that uh, thinks they know, the ones that have the decision, you go to their source. And in this case, if you want to know about Admiralty, go to Benedict's on Admiralty. And if you've got a ton of money, you go buy the encyclopedia. Otherwise, find a, lo- a university law library. That's where I found it. And you read about Admiralty, and then you become the guy that knows it. Maybe a lot better than me, because I didn't take... The notes I took were inside. I didn't take notes. Well, I took notes. What I'm saying is that they're not round me. I don't have the proof of all this. I didn't do chapter and verse and put it together because I was just, I was lost looking for an answer. Where'd America go, folks? Well, it's in there. It's been in there the whole time. It was our, it was our ignorance on what had happened in altering it. And then we had a couple of these occupations that step over us. And we are just, we're obscured by all this stuff. And you have to start to make sense of it. Right, so follow the money was one of the things. There is no money. Oh, well, that should have been your answer. Now, when you start talking about money, the money they talked about was actually fiat script. Remembered? I told you they talked about money as no. It's as money. It's as law. Your policy works as law. Your agencies work as law. Nothing's law. It's all policy. It's how you're going to get to the masses to the next point. It's how you get to the day when BLM agents that don't have any law enforcement authority on their own are shooting people under the color of state authority. And I come and tell you this, and you don't understand what I'm talking for some reason. I tell you that you're going to have to stop this, otherwise you may be the next victim, and you don't understand what I'm talking about or some reason. Or it's just too much work. I just, I'll take my chances. I'll just self-censor. I just won't go out in a public land no more. Well, there it is. That's what they wanted you to do. You just stay in your stack them and pack them Agenda 21 podment, if you have one and feel fortunate. I don't know if you notice how you watch that. Those podments are now the thing that they're giving all the homeless people and dragging those working homeless in through the system of 821, perfectly administered, as more and more people are being down trodden because they don't deal in money anymore. Why I keep telling you it's so important to maintain that private thing. Okay, so where do I go? I mean, how much, where do I go? Keep going. We we just keep going. All these other ideas that are coming up. Right? Everything you can look at. Ways to understand it that are not opinions, that are not a bunch of uh, discombobulated different pieces of information that sound authoritative. Now, let me get to the gold fringe one quickly time. Understand at least this much. I said it once. I'm going to repeat it because it's so important. The jurisdiction is established not by the gold fringe. The jurisdiction is established in the law. In the United States of America, admiralty was given exclusive to the federal jurisdiction. It's established there through Congress. The way the jurisdiction, once established, is and let's just give it that it's lawful and it's it, it's its officers are lawful and all that. Forget about anything there, there that's a problem. That it's all right. The way that the jurisdiction is invoked is not by the fringe, but the complaint itself having to be sufficient to invoke that jurisdiction, whatever flag it flies. It might be true, but I don't see what its force and effect is. 
because you're in the jurisdiction of admiralty, you better be dealing in admiralty. The force and effect might be to give you notice, but to me, that's a good thing. See, if I realize it, and I took, I take cognizance of these things, but see, I deal with it, all this in a different way anyway, so it answers all this. I don't care what flag they fly. I don't care what they, what their jurisdiction will be once they start to deal with it. I defeat them before we get going. Or I expose the criminality. Now, I don't know, again, what do you do with that? That's just a criminal. But if I walk in and I see a gold fringe flag, I'm, I will presume, because it's the most brutal jurisdiction, I will address that court in an admiralty condition with my admiralty remedies. And they may be few to start with, but they are there. And if I don't lead with them, and it is an admiralty, if I go with my opinion or what I think or try to stay away, they're just going to come beat me up anyway eventually. But if I walk in and I give them the answer to the lack of their authority, and I make a record of it, then they want to be criminal. I'm sitting on a different footing. I'm not presumed the criminal they can come chase down. Oh, I've identified that they're not they're operating outside their authority. Why? Because I understood what they were looking for, and I didn't allow them to pr have the presumption stand on me and stick. I established an alternative status that they can't attack. In fact, it, the way it works in Admiralty, I become a neutral in aid of that jurisdiction. How's that? And they're attacking a friend and an ally when you do it right under admiralty. So, okay, maybe enough said there. There's a lot to understand. It's really fascinating. We've really been dumbed down. I, I, know, the, I know the folks that I listen to are not unintelligent, and I want us to take, I've been asking us to take the, the steps to take up, get up out of the, the stinking abyss they have drug us into. And you're dealing in a war, and you're dealing with criminals, organized crime. So nothing necessarily is certain. What will be certain is whether or not you get the right mental uh, um, perspective on the realities and not what's just printed out there on the Internet to tell you stuff. Jurisdictions are established in a law. Those are constitutional in the United States. For the Admiralty, there's uh, the rules and stuff set up by that lawfully constituted body. Hopefully, without the question of whether or not the officers are constituted, let's give that to them. Then you have a purpose, a juris subject matter purpose, and that it functions in a certain way. And if you've walked yourself into that, you've done something that you did unaware that you are now just fighting against yourself when there's an answer to stop it. And if you deal with them on that term instead of fighting them, you're probably going to turn out a whole lot more. Uh, the other thing is that people, let's get into no, without getting to the straw man, just these fictions. When you read in the in Benedict's on Admiralty or anything on Admiralty, and you start reading the court cases, you'll start recognizing how they've uh, they've divided up what you think is a singular entity, the boat, let's say, the ship. The ship has a name. It's designated a certain way. Its rights are not the rights of the owner. Its rights are not the right of the captain. Its rights are different than the, the hold, the storage, it, the uh, the cargo it has. All those things I just mentioned have their own rights, have their own designations. The bottom of the boat is different than the top. They have, that's what they call bottomry. You start looking at the fictions that have been created up to deal with certain problems in these jurisdictional issues and conflicts of people with themselves, it's pretty fascinating what we've had to do just to keep, if you will, a peace that is outside of us. That to throw that all away is to throw away a piece of ourselves, I think, in how we deal in those manners. It's overwhelming to some level because we've been babes in arms without giving any knowledge. And so now we're like, you know, that in, when you've been in the dark a long time, even a little bit of light can hurt your eyes. That's what's going on here with all this. But when you start realizing that the that the boat the ship has rights different than the owner, different than the than the uh, leasor, different than the captain, and they all have their own rights. You start well, those are all, if you will, straw men, for the purposes of re, of identifying relative rights in relation to everything else. So uh, I guess enough said there. Uh, so when you start to see these divisions in the same thing to try and treat conflicts that we've had, be they risk assessments for lost cargo, uh, accidents, whether they be mutiny, whether they be uh, piracy, all this stuff comes to bear uh, on, on this in this jurisdiction that has been dealt with over time. 
It's an insight even into man himself, man and women in themselves. Like I said, the Constitution makes provision for piracy. It's called privateers. That, that's why the United States constitutionally cannot uh, uh, make a law against pirates. It would be unconstitutional, for as insane as that sounds. But this is the reality that people seem to miss. So privateers are sitting in, in admiralty. They're also sitting in another authority. The the command the, the, the grants of the sovereign. Remember patents, the pat, letter patent of pirate, pri, privateering is also the letter patent of the land. They, these have a, a functional source of authority built into them internationally, and so if you don't have a, an awareness of this, it, it all looks overwhelming, and I just don't want to mess with it. But that's the problem. You got to mess with it. We were supposed to be a vigilant mass of people vigilant on our freedoms and our rights and liberties and whatever all else you want to bring to bear. It is a closed frame uh, within which we, we, we function, but it appears when you, as I say, without the adulteration, the United States system without the adulteration looked like a pretty cool system in the history of men and women, mostly men. Again, women are doing this ERA. M women are treated as men, not women. That's the other problem. That's an insult to me. I mean, it's an insult to most women if they've understood that. But you're treated as a man in the world, and, and you were given rights, even if you had a so-called people of color, which were uh, the freed slaves, they were treated as white. You see that in Title 42, Section 1981. It says, as the white citizen. As the white citizen. As, as, as. All this, all this thing is not what it is. It's what it as. And it, you have to come with terms that, and you have to stop saying that you're going to reject it because that's how you're being dealt. And I've found if you embrace the fact that that's how you're dealing with and then look for the soft underbelly of this beast, you have a better way to cut it. You have a better way to be, free yourself from it. You have a better way to not engage it. You do stay away. And so this is all I've been trying to tell you all behind the woodshed on how this works. You're not going to do it by not understanding the sources of the foundation of the jurisdictions that may come to deal with you. And I've been trying to reduce that workload uh, down to a place like for the miners. Let's start in the administrative side, since that's so clearly able to be defeated. Let's start there so we get back in the practice of defending ourselves in something that doesn't have the jeopardy attached to it that you might find now with a so-called police officer. A police officer, not a peace officer, policing the policy. Got it, folks? Are you getting it? It's not law, it's policy. That's a, he's, a, he's a privateer right there. They're as law agents, not law agents. They, they really can't do peace. They're there to interfere. And they do it with how they get away with it. And until mo the mass of this society, and any society, steps up in the right way and, and comes with a solid foundation and a singular mind about this, we're going to be divided and defeated. Divided, the house will be falling. Period. As we've already, that's biblical, I think, even. Uh, Lincoln used it, and he, and he divided and killed this, this the United States of America. And so, boy, I take a lot longer on this than I would expect to. So something else to follow the money, which people, it's kind of hard to see in this case, uh, but uh, is something that I've talked to you about, something that got me involved, I got involved with back in the early to, uh, 2000s, uh, something I told you I predicted about the Sandusky pedophilia thing and moved on over to, to uh, uh, over there to England. Uh, then you saw how that blew up. I won't been through all that. I won't go through that more. But here it is, folks, uh, the... What I've been telling you about this child services and uh, follow the money has to do with the amount of money they get when they come and take your, your sons and daughters, but that I found it was tied, and I was trying to do the documentary before they handled me, they got a way to deal with you, uh, that uh, I was telling you that the, the, the foster care system uh, was uh, one of the main suppliers or uh, as part of this thing, and here we have a report, folks, for those of you that uh, did not know, and now you can use this, not for the story, but for the fact of its existence, of the proof of the fact, and as I, as I pointed out to you, what was really some of the sourcing uh, and the silence that you hear over this group of people not being arrested when we know it exists. And here's the report now that proves what I was telling you, what I had seen not from the 
outward trafficking, but from what the judges and the state agencies and the people were doing to hide evidence. The, the omission of the evidence, the act of the type of evidence they were hiding, told me something. Again, so you're looking at you're looking at the silence. You're almost looking for ghosts. You do look like you're crazy, but you're looking for something that's actually there that's not being moved forward or blocked that was supposed to be brought. You hear it like today with the Brady, the Brady amendment, the Brady rights of having to be divulging, uh, agreeing to accept certain uh, evidence and being disclosed certain evidence that's happening on the prosecution side. It's the failure, let's say, to for the court uh, for the court to acknowledge the power of the patent. That's right in federal law. They can't diminish that. But the the the, the patent is evidence that shall be recognized. When you see these organizations in right in full view of everybody, and no one sees else sees it because they don't understand this stuff. Uh, when you see them omitting to do things that they shall do, you follow and you put together those dots. They will tell you, they will, will help to tell you, in this case it did tell me, of another thing. And this is another way of how you have to work through this. It does take a little while, but it's not hard. Your, your own instinct, will, your, in, your sense, your sense of right will guide this probably as easily as anything I could tell you. But here's the report, folks, if I, I was telling you. I could see it in 20, uh, uh, 2003 or so, 2000 to 2003 right before they, they took care of me, and they got rid of my do, my documentary, which I was trying to expose this then. Chilling NCMEC report shows 88% of missing sex tra trafficked kids come from U.S. foster care. Okay? That's all I have to say about that. 88% of the missing sex trafficked kids come from U.S. foster care. What about, remember those Kansas, the Kansas said they lost 1,000 kids? This is this is a tip of the iceberg here, folks. And so I responded to this this way, uh, relative to the statements made in the story, two points, where they say, America has a dark secret that no one wants to admit. And, uh, and then I say, when you try to expose it, as I tried in 2000, roughly 2000, they, quote, they have their ways to deal with you. And then I make an additional comment that you don't hear of more or any arrests of government officials should terrify or sicken you. And in this story that they'll talk to you, you can read from that headline, they use the word runaway. That they claim that these kids are runaways. And I say runaway is a neat trick, isn't it? So you see how they can provide for an excuse, a plausible deniability, that allows them to foster and encourage their foster care to be uh, trafficking uh, kids. Why? I, I told anybody that would listen that got involved, you make sure that you make a meeting with your uh, sons or daughters that have been stolen from you uh, every other day or every day, as often as you can get to make sure that they know you want to see, they have to present your son or daughter to you. If they don't, then you get to go in and say, "Why aren't you doing it?" You at least you keep them in this. You keep them up front. You don't let them get lost in the back. Because if they get lost in the back, I was able to identify this runaway trick happens and other things. This is the one that they point out to you. But so, if you had any question about what I've been telling you, folks, uh, that now a report you can get the link over here. Uh, it says uh, you'll have it in the broadcast, or if you found it already, report shows 88% of the missing sex traffic kids come from U.S. foster care. Is not a surprise to me. Shocking, but not a surprise, uh, folks. I'm just glad it's now coming out. So those of you, this is evidence of a thing that gives you probable cause that you can bring forward to say this is the report that's now public. This is what's going on. We have to go investigate. We have to check this. What happened there? You start bringing these cockroaches out for those of you that think this is an important matter. I, I don't know what to say. This is a, All the problems we're talk, hearing is because no one paid attention and no one worked to pay attention. And it continues if you don't. So I say, you don't do anything, it continues. They play their games uh, and... You, you and people suffer 
And I just keep telling you, if they're going to do it to you here, it's reflected out there somewhere, and you see them doing this out there. And we live in the caucusocracy for all you all think you're in a constitution and you have a right to, to defend uh, because of that. No, you're living in a caucusocracy. These are the people, the worst rise to the top, and they run the show. And they run the show that you are supposed to keep from being the spaghetti western it's become. And I'm attempting to show you ways, because I don't know that we can address this thing uh, through the Second Amendment. I really don't see it. I haven't had anybody talk to me about that, that that's a viable alternative. We can't get amongst these. If we can't, if we can't put down some of the most inane discussions I see going on about some of the most inconsequential concepts, uh, if we can't put those down and we'll defend to the death that position in each one of us, we'll never do what I'm talking about, ever. Certainly the Second Amendment is the wrong direction. It'd be like a bunch of drunk kids trying to, trying to go do something. Forget it. Not happening. If we can't come together and look at the more important positions to fix, the conditions to fix, and we don't understand these conditions are right in our... They, but they're so bold, they're doing it in our face, and that you can't actually go to the caucusocracy. You're going to have to find alternatives. You have to understand that battlefield, as I keep telling you about it. You're going to have to have alternatives, and you have to hit them in a evolutionary engagement ways, as I keep developing, that actually are not so evolutionary. They just haven't been practiced, as I've been finding out, if I tell you about it, using your equity remedies. They're all right there to do. You take it out of their hands, you beat, you use it as a club, beat them to death. It, they don't respond. They're, they're, they're dead before. They're dead on arrival. They are dead on arrival with them. So we have a way to get at them, and I don't see anybody utilizing them. I see them going way off and doing all kinds of other things and arguing that it's the way to go. And I'm saying, well, that's not really an understanding that you, you should have that way. That these people, This government uh, abuses uh, uh, the children in its care. It'll abu it abuses you. You seem to dismiss at some point or even to the point that, okay, they will, they will harm us, but we're not going to really rise up to do much about it. We're not going to start taking a slower road at this because we have missed it. We aren't, we aren't our forefathers. We don't have the spine of our forefathers. We don't have the mind of our forefathers. We don't have the spirit of our forefathers. We've lost all of it. And that ain't going to get us where we need to go. And while we're not going there, this type of stuff comes out. We now find, they call it a chilling. Uh, folks, it's not chilling. Not to me. It's the reality. The thing that's chilling is that it's lasted so long, had to come to report uh, before someone could write that it was chilling because we were letting this happen this entire time without checks and balances. Remember, I told you in the documentary, I had the lawmakers that made the law who thought that this bringing the CSD into the state it's actually a federal program. It's actually Rights of Child International program adopted, and they brought this thing in. And once they turned that switch on for that machine, the, you could, I told you, you could see it in their eyes. They were terrified of this thing. They, didn't, they couldn't stop it. Its funding came, its source of life came from somewhere else. Didn't have a clue on how they were going to shut it all down. Yeah, they didn't. And there's a way to do it, but they didn't. So you see there's an internal uh, uh, problem, too. Everyone has their limit. Everyone feels vulnerable. Now, I talked about that sheriff who we told uh, one time to how this law works so that you don't have BLM agents shooting people. And he saw there was a law, and the BLM don't have a right to shoot people. You don't have a right to actually enforce the law, but for his contract. And he went up and got and talked with the, uh, started talking with the U.S. prosecutor and came back a whip puppy, folks. I told him, don't go up there. You don't have the background on dealing with that guy. But he did. And he'd come back as a whip puppy, and that's as far as we went with that sheriff. It wouldn't do any more to stop any further the uh, encroachment of the Fed authority over you. And the CSD is a Fed authority that's adopted by the state over you. And now we see it's out. I couldn't do it. I couldn't expose it. May not have mean, meant anything anyway. What I tend to do in the world does not seem to get the clamor that it, it would need anyway. So maybe it was a good thing I didn't have to continue the rest of my life under the threat of death because everybody who's done this is, that I've noticed got caught has died. I think I'm feeling pretty lucky at this point when I look back at the, the history since when I started to try and expose this. It's finally coming out, folks. The United States government's system of foster care actually is promoting tra child trafficking. It's human trafficking, but they do it with adults. And then I also have wondered, why are you, uh, is there such an immigration uh, thing about the kids being ripped from asylum-seeking men and women with their, their offspring, and they're being ripped apart? 
Yes, that's terrible, but why weren't you focused on it when it was happening with the CSD? Why is it the immigrants that get more of your attention than it was the CSD? And have you done that to the CSD? Maybe the immigrants would have had more sympathy when they got here. You're just watching the habit that's been built in the system against you, the Americans, and you tolerate that. You don't tolerate it for someone foreigners, which would be right. You don't want to hurt your guests. You want to invite your guests and treat them nice. But why didn't you have the, uh, the, the moral integrity to protect your own, that you allow this? I don't know if people got the clue on that. The Texas repository for these kids that are ripped away from their family under the denial of the asylum-seeking standard also housed... CSD kids in a Walmart, as we also predicted would be the future. Years and years, decades ago, we said that. Why was it a Walmart for me with no windows, no this, no that? Why were they near sheriff's offices? Why were they near railroad? Why were this, that, and the other? Well, you're looking at it now. And they had CSD kids with the asylum-seeking uh, uh, offspring of the uh, people that are coming in the country. Why is Americans not protecting their own sons and daughters through the color of authority uh, imposition of the CSD that we now have a report that says that 88% of those uh, kids you find out there and here uh, have run away are really part of the child trafficking. Why didn't anybody talk about that? Why doesn't anybody know about that? Aren't you interested that when I tried to get that done, not for me, just for the subject matter, that when I tried, I told you that I tried to get this exposed, that I got taken care of, and I'm actually really feeling fortunate that I'm not dead, because that seems to happen to anybody that does that. I certainly didn't know that then. These people have their ways of taking care of you. Why hasn't this been a bigger story? Why does it still continue to roll out? You see it as Pizzagate, and, and to me that's a, dim, a diminution of the, of the problem. But here, anyway, so here's the report. 88% of your kids in foster care are in trouble. You saw it, you heard it with a thousand kids being disappeared. I couldn't find a thousand kids in Kansas. Come on. I mean, this is what it's about. So, runaway is a neat trick that's got all kinds of other, got a, dozens and dozens of tricks that they, words that they'll tell you, things that they do to cover up this, this industry. And one of your clues is that there's not a lot of officials getting caught up. When you find out that the system is the source of it, and you're not seeing any arrests, the system is the source of it. They don't mind to abuse kids or you, is what we live under now. Moving on. For those of you into cannabis, and I keep talking to you about, you got to step up for yourself here because they're really taking some motion on this. They'll abuse your kids, they'll abuse you. And they abuse you and try to take care of your kids. Uh, here was a story we move on from the what CSD won't do and what they'll do against you into what you can do for yourself that the government will stop you from doing, and yet you can prevail. British boy hospitalized after medicinal cannabis confiscated stirs debate. Was the story coming out? The British Interior Ministry used an exceptional power on Saturday to release medicinal cannabis oil that had been confiscated from an epileptic boy who was later hospitalized suffering from seizures. Just like that other story we heard before, but this time they stole the, ca the cannabis medicine and then they, had to, it, they looked at the harm they had done and in UK, the minister having the authority, they call it an exceptional power, 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 folks an exceptional power to release or license the stuff, this, this cannabis oil that the parents got from Canada, of all places. And so the boy can use now his medicine. What's the takeaway here? Not getting any further in the story. What have I been telling all of y'all about collecting up all the stories where they show there's a medicinal value to Hemp, because that's, the I think, the fastest and biggest target, the, the Achilles heel, the limitation, the lie, the fraud that the government, the federal government of the United States has put on us, is it has no medicinal value. This now shows you, and you need to get the proof of this, that this is the evidence that it has a medicinal value in the UK. And for a particular thing. 
It took the exceptional powers and interest of this official in order to get it done, to license that use. You start tying that up in a bullet point presentation, and you turn around, and you come to the United States, and you go to the DEA, and you do the FDA, and you slap them right across the chops with another piece of evidence that shows that they're committing fraud and harm to not recognize a medicinal value. And you should have dozens and dozens of other evidences here. This is not just about the, the customs of United of UK stealing medicine. This is about the fact that it was returned, and it's, a, it's something that under their laws is a Schedule One. also. If you didn't think we went, if you thought we went too far from England on our laws and rules, theirs is a Schedule One too. A one as well, uh, also, I can't say one, two. And so, here's your evidence, folks. It has a medicinal value. It took the exceptional powers of the UK to, to, to recognize it. Let me offer you one other thing about how badly we're treated in this country. Remember, the UK would not send a, a, a someone who was going to be suffering extradition, uh, a kid that was did the digital, the digital some kind of law, breaking the law. Uh, they would not send him to the United States because the prisons in the United States are inhumane. You, you think the holding of those kids in Texas ain't different? You think that the treatment... Uh, is it uh, of of trafficking is acceptable by these uh, cockastocracians? Do you, you think that this is the status quo at this point? That you're looking at them, you guys get involved about this marijuana medicinal value, starting with the medicinal side. I, I think it needs to be uh, uncriminalized. Period. Uh, it should be part of your production rights in your land. But that's my opinion. And that's not going to go far on its own anyway. So. You have an inroad. Here's a proof of a country who also says that the treatment of its people in the United States is inhumane has also now turned around and said, well, I guess despite our Section 1, our Schedule 1 listing, it is a medicinal. It has a purpose. Two points for you there. Three points, actually, with the authority. That you collect this up, not as a headline, not as notice, uh, more than it happened, but not as a story. I could care less about the story. We have a problem, and we're being treated, mistreated. And our, we'll, if we'll mistreat our women and our children, we'll we'll mistreat everything else. It's just the. It's like when you they say it. They tell you the government. If you find a youth that, that harms a cat, burns off its fur, press, smashes in its skull, we might have to know about that because that's showing some kind of an aggressive tendency that we have to check. When the government's willing to mistreat your children. You call them, they call them the children, your offspring, and you women. Do you think it maybe started out as someone who sma- burnt the fur off a cat and smashed its head in? I think so. Are you okay with that? And if you're not okay with that, how come I hear crickets? Here's the proof. High-level power, licensed a medicine called cannabis oil for a treatment. Causing also this debate that we talked about in the title, which starts out that it was taken from him. The story and update was they gave it back to him under extraordinary power. And starting the discussion of whether or not it is a medicine in the UK. Well, we already proved that it is, because he just issued the license. That the mother had to take responsibility and go do, and then be threatened by this. And the son had to suffer some more seizures without it. Is, again, what you may have to do to right this wrong. I'm not asking, I'm trying to keep us out of jeopardy. Here's one where you had to, she jumped. It was more valuable and more important that they went to get the medicine and prove it and suffer the consequences. That may be what, what we have to do as well. In fact, in this case, I don't know that there would have been any other answer. But here's your evidence. Those of you that want to talk bad, think you got it now understood, want to want to stop the nonsense, want to stop complaining about the nonsense, or be, or do you want to continue to complain about the nonsense and do nothing about it? I've been asking you week after week, pointing out these proofs, these bag of facts you bring, this pile of evidence that the local jurisdiction called the United States federal government, relative to the international, is committing fraud is harming people. And I'm saying that as somebody that finds no value in cannabis for myself. 
I don't care that you use it for yourself. I don't even care why you use it. But I see some people that are using it for very particular things that are being denied that are suffering without it. That there's something, I don't know why there's not something in people, well, maybe not for myself, whether I participate, I partake or not, but I can help support that mother's efforts that she was subject to. They mistreated her. They ripped, like the United States will rip your kids away from you as an asylum seeker. The CSD will rip your kids away from you as your family and destroy your family and the knowledge of nuclear, the nuclear family. All that is destroyed underneath an authority that's international. An international body ripped the medicine away from a, a child, so-called, and found that when they did that, they caused the harm and then had to fix it is another method of how we're going to fix this folks while you're in the problem maybe rethink how you approach it this woman I don't know my hat's off to her being tenacious enough and and responsible enough and I mean what do you say she went over took the expenses to go to Canada to get six months worth of cannabis treatments and then came back and then be subjected by a government uh, to allow that have agreed for a short time that her, her son could suffer and this is not the only case so as long as we keep crickets to this stuff it's going to continue I'm showing you the governments are the abuser the governments are the traffickers the governments are and do it for the bottom line I don't know if you know how much money transfers when they take your kid from you and your family the money there's money federal grant money and state grant money that comes in that you get paid as an agency follow the money and then they lose a percentage to run away and well, you want to know tell me what the value of that on the backside is I did I didn't go that far to find that out I didn't know that I just knew it was going on and I had a documentary that was almost finished and that's when they took care of me they put let me put all my energy into it and then they destroyed the the evidence because I was using another problem was at the time I was using a uh, peg access public facility who knew folks this is way back in 2000 who knew but they got they they have their ways they dealt with it. But here we are seeing that the government actually supports the abuse, and I say now over a dec three decades of looking, they do that in about every I think every aspect of your life, and so there should you're in a target rich environment. And why I'm so astounded I continue to have to play crickets, and we're not sitting on the surf in the tsunami of of success, as we all work together to work out the problem that's infiltrated our our nations they'll take a valid uh, cure in quotes from a boy you don't think they'll tell they'll impose it upon a vet you think anybody's oh because you're grown up enough now you can do for yourself no you're all underneath this license of medicine combat vet posts shocking picture of how many pills he has to take because cannabis is illegal. And I don't think it's a fix to legalize it. Just stop making it criminal. Just bring it into production. This vet took pseudo pills. That the, uh, he found uh, some candy that looked like the pill size he was taking. He calculated out that he would take out 9,800 prescription pills for what the government was prescribing to try and do, to try and uh, facilitate his pain where he found that cannabis would would help he t put 9800 pills together and sealed them in a container that looked to be over two and a half feet long maybe a foot wide uh, full of these pills all of which were going through the the veteran system the prescription system none of which helped him where cannabis did for those of you that want to take this on, here's the second story. You go the the child that needs it or the vet that needs it. You see that the vet chose to go to cannabis to help him uh, over the pharmaceuticals. He didn't eliminate the pharmaceuticals, which is another plus for you if you know to state that. It doesn't eliminate the bottom line for the pharmaceutical company that's licensed for the bottom line of the government corporation for the bottom line. No, he's still giving them a little bit of business, but he's actually being helped in this other is a proof, even anecdotally, not officially like Britain now, got a signature for that order, but anecdotally the choice proves the need and the utility.
for this. That you can put this in a proof list, summary, uh, bullet points, put together your evidence, and then you submit it. You find the organization that's obstructing this in you and everybody else, those similarly situated. Now I'm getting more to an equity response, uh, which is pretty direct when you can show you had a right to be treated better and they had a duty to do otherwise, not commit the fraud, not to pl not to close their eyes and look away, but that there's evidence that they're not taking cognizance of it. If you look very carefully, the agencies have to look at the world, if you will. They have to look at the whole environment. And that is where you get your, your hook in to get in the pathway you take in order to say, you guys can't com continue to commit this fraud. Here's the evidence of the fraud, and here's the evidence of the, what you're avoiding. And here's your omission to actually look at this. And you're going to be moving a lot more powerfully. You, the power shifts to you at that point where you find a breach in their power that, that allow, in the authority that they've been given to allow them to have the power. You find a breach in that. What is all I'm ever saying to you behind the woodshed? You, This is how we have to deal with them at this point. I don't know why I get any arguments and why people roll their eyes or they argue somewhere else or they say you don't have a right or you don't have this or you can't do that. This is how it's done right now. In a way, I look through it and maybe it's not so bad. What I don't like is being the the onslaught of what we have to deal with. That will have to be checked as well. But I'm not talking about that at this point. I'm talking about there's something out there that you now see direct evidence agreed to by a government who looks at the United States and says, well, your prisons are inhumane. We then find out that the kids are being abused through the system of service. I told you, child, child service was like adult services. I told you that. that that's an abuse. We see the extension. They'll harm us. They'll harm our vets, our older guys serving the country. There's an, it's an abusive system. You have the evidence that that system intends abuse. You have the system, the, the evidence that shows the system is not looking at the things that would allow it to make otherwise quite decisions. And that failure, that breach, is harming people, is a cause, folks. I don't know what else to say. It's not that hard. I've given you from both ends of the spectrum. I've also given you a, a, a legitimate power exercised in an extraordinary way. I'm showing you that there's authorities that will allow harm upon their own people. And their decisions allow that. I'm, I'm pointing out how you address the harms without having to go uh, to the um, ballistics, I guess. I mean, I want, I don't know what to say. I, I want people to start stepping up. Because I noticed. I notice we're not, and more and more harm comes. And then we're looking, and then we start discussing the news. Oh, like it's still about Hillary. It's still about the server. It's still about Comey. It's still about this. It's still about that. It's still about nine one one. Folks, it's all still because you didn't stop it. You didn't do a thing to stop it. You just talk about it. So we have ways. We have things we can do. I think I. We're doing it, so I don't. It's not a think. We're doing it. Just, are you going to engage this? Are you going to help? Are you going to help people who can't help themselves? You know, I guess maybe we don't have to, but we do live in a society that we complain about. As I've said, stop your complaint. I don't need to see it. If if you're not going to help, what are you doing complaining? You're a part of the problem. Your opinions are a part of the problem. Your inactions are part of the problem. I'm not saying go any particular place, but go somewhere to do something. I'm explaining the road, the roadmap here, the pathway you you can take in order to make to make yourself effectual. Why wouldn't you want to be that success anyway? Either I mean, this is the other thing I don't get. And what about success? Is the, the same system that, uh, that 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 they feed the bottom line to? It's doing some research. Things come up. I wanted to give you some uh, the, the the abuse that they do to women in medical care and uh, and little ones and vets. 
there's other things that are coming on the horizon until we figure out where the source and the beginnings of cancer is, which looks to be maybe your vaccines, but we'll see. Your epigenetic alterations by the new living and chemical world, uh, your toxicities that no one tests, that just kind of goes underneath the administrative uh, uh, gu guise of administrative complicity uh, and lawfulness. Uh, well, they have sir, uh, a potential cure. Again, be careful. The words in cures in parenthetic, I mean, um, in quotes here, a terminal breast cancer cured by injecting patient with billions of her own white blood cells. So look very carefully. It's her own, not anyone else's, like you might see in vaccines. Uh, they aren't using uh, some other body's blood. They're strictly coming from you to fix yourself. And the body has failed to, in its communication some wise it has failed to do this on its own that there's now a, a looks to be a therapy that will allow the white blood cells of someone's own body to attack a cancer that was caused by we don't know what we assume but the same pharmaceutical system uh, that's been uh, help helping to give it to you and uh, the food system that may not be giving you the nutrition notwithstanding you can eat the forage it doesn't mean the the the, the, the roughage doesn't mean it's it's adequate uh, but they but now they have this white blood cell thing that they can inject it's your own white blood cells that goes after what white blood cells would uh, would do in an infection uh, condition and and so uh, again I, you can study all this i just want to make you aware for as much much as they harm us, they're attempting to find ways to cure us, and I think that's just to prolong the extraction process. All right? Then you're also dealing with it. You're not dealing with the things of life. You're not dealing with the frauds and the deceptions of government either. You're dealing with your illness. You, you have no capacity. It's not a judgment. You just It's the truth, the fact. You have no capacity outside of dealing with your, uh, your, your ailment, your dis-ease, as we hear. So that we were looking at we were looking at these white blood cells from someone on their own problem, not not spread across the the uh, the biological DNA units that we are different and distinct. Um, what what when they looked at that at that white blood cell and they got this, they had to check out things. They have all their blood tests. They have their now the DNA sequencing they can do. They have their they know about things in the constituents of the blood. Uh, they can work this out. Our technology of understanding that in the Western medicine has gone way way up, where we may have had it intuitionally. Uh, but what about this thing about identifying you? How do they identify you? It's simple to say, well, I'll take this thing out of your body. I'll process it and put it back in your body. Well, that's something. What about in other things? How do you? How do they know? How do you know it's you that you're dealing with when they come to these treatments? Uh, do you know who's using your DNA data? Is a little statement that came up. Who is using this DNA data? And this becomes a thing of this becomes a big problem in my mind uh, for a, a couple of other reasons. But uh, they, this report now goes on. Uh, they talk about how you can go in the genealogy now because you can submit your DNA to these companies like two what twenty two. 243Me or whatever the heck it is. What's it, what's it called? I don't know. A anyway, I don't see it. Well, like I said, I don't get that, that close. But you, you know, those of you that do it or know about it will know about it. If you don't, you can, you'll run across it. There's companies that will take your DNA. Well, you would look inside. It's 23andMe, excuse me, and Ancestry, I think, dot .com. Uh, they uh, won't share genetic information with law enforcement without a court order is the fact that they will share your information. Court order doesn't necessarily mean you've had committed a crime either. They just need uh, some authority. Somebody comes with some authority to get it through the court. Or a hacker. So what about this DNA? Of it? How do they identify you and as separate? Well, the world knows about you now. And when gene sequencing, the world knows how to inter interact with you on a biological basis. That I thought this, uh, this identity of the woman getting her white blood cells connected to how do you identify that relates over to DNA is who is using your DNA. Remember, uh, the Israelis told us uh, years ago, as I reported, uh, they can synthesize your, DA, uh, in, in D, uh, their, your DNA. Uh, who do you think's using it, folks? 
people who these people who do this it's your synthesized world in the future uh, that you look at the government being abusive on the one hand they can help cure you of something but you kind of miss the point they may have caused it with their other policies and impositions and then they offer you a tool to go find out who's your family in the world who, who, who are you part of and then they already have their hands in that and when they find out then you find out that the future has an identity problem that they're going to identify uh, you have an identity problem because they don't have a problem with identifying you or synthesizing your DNA or putting you anywhere really should be you should be considering what you do today how you interact with this system that you interact with the system what they're doing without your uh, your um, your oversight how, however that's that failure is being done however they've created these um, formalistic uh, obstructions even like a comment period uh, but like there's another formalistic comment period called an equity action. Uh, you can probably bring that. Uh, that would be a lot quicker. But it takes people with knowledge to do that, acting in engagement uh, to stop it. That there's looking at nature. It's, it's apparently natu natural, natural for a parasite or uh, an organism um, parasite <laughs> Uh, uh, to seek out another's DNA. And, and, and so this is what these, these companies start to look like to me. They're, they're absorbing your DNA to do things to it. Well, we find in nature there's actually an analog for this. Watch, you'll see this on this link, watch a bacteria fishing for a DNA to speed up its own evolution. Now, I don't agree with the word evolution. I think it's more adaption with the way they talk of it. But this is a cholera bacteria that you see at a microscopic level when they made a dye that would a uh, fluorescent dye they could see it that the the hair the the dart that comes out uh, from this thing is only is 10,000 times thinner than a hair uh, but on the slide in the video you in the in the gif I saw uh, you you see this this appendage come out and it track it attacks something that uh, they claim is DNA and it brings it back and it eats it and they say that the DNA goes into this organism this cholera organism and it actually reforms that DNA it got into its own structure and it they're saying this is the horizontal tree gene transfer method that allows I call, would seem epigenetic alteration of the gene capacity to bring immunology and immunity immunity to it over uh like antibiotics and so this this wanting your dna to alter another organism to fortify it and make it tougher to defeat is a natural process that i think this natural law that we miss the natural processes that we're missing inform us that our societies and the people amongst us are doing the very same things to attack us that we've lowered our guard down about the type of uh, information we allow or the privacy we keep or what we've allowed to diminish that privacy to the point that we are if you will losing our uh, our our ability to stop disease in the society that takes a daily a moment to moment decision are you allowing the system to invade your body or and take it over in all the ways that it can or are you building up walls to keep it out and you safe and if you're going to not do that then what's your complaint and if you are doing that then then we have a whole other thing to start looking at as far as how do you organize your rel relation to the society that you're now looking at, which a lot of you will complain about but not understand why we're here today that other people continue to exploit like some parasite? Are you going to be susceptible to that? Or are you going to offer some resistance, some real resistance? Thank you for uh, listening today. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com uh, for all that you do there. Thank you very much. And uh, freedoms that were dot, dot, uh, com I think, is needs donations for those of you that can. Uh, Spreaker, thank you uh, for uh, Grammy Mary for your your donations to that to keep us going on that side and um, everywhere else that's out there re uh, posting this, promoting the broadcast. I thank you very much. If I don't get around to y'all, uh, and I'll uh, be here next week. Tech diffs or nature willing.